Are you a Christian who wants to grow personally and spiritually? Are there books recommended to you that may be listed as self-help or self-improvement? I want to share with you four ways that self-improvement can ruin your soul. It's not that you shouldn't read these books or learn from these authors, but you should hear these cautions before you dive in headfirst. The last two are the scariest I experienced in myself, and I want to share them with you so you don't have to experience what I went through. The first danger is that we treat the source of the problem as the solution of the problem. That's inherent with this idea of self-improvement or self-help. If we have caused our problem, or if people have caused our problems, and we think we can solve it, we have actually gotten the biblical view of humanity backwards. The Bible says there is no one who does good. There's no one who seeks after God. So if that is the case, if we are sinful, then we can't look to ourselves or other humans to be the ultimate solution to our problems. We've got to look beyond ourselves. And if we want true heart change, that can only come through the Holy Spirit. That can't come through another person or their ideas. The second danger is we can knowingly or unknowingly embrace unbiblical worldviews. When we read a book, when we take in someone's ideas, their understanding of their problem and their development of their solution is going to be framed by their worldview. So if you listen to their problem and their solution, you could be drinking in a worldview that you can't find in the Bible that contradicts the scripture. We hear a lot of stoicism. We hear a lot of mentions of evolution. We see a lot of humanism in the self-improvement world. So you've got to prepare yourself to understand their worldview and understand what the Bible teaches in order to embrace their ideas or at least engage with them in a meaningful and biblical way. And then you can learn from their protocols and their strategies. Take what's biblical and use that. Whatever's unbiblical, you have to throw it away. And some resources you just won't be able to use at all because it's completely framed in an unbiblical worldview. These next two are really important, so make sure you pay extra attention. If you're a note taker, write these down for sure because these dangers really got me into some big trouble and I can only thank God for getting me out of it. The third danger is we can run to self-help gurus and self-improvement gurus before we run to God. Think about how scary and how dangerous that is. The God who created the universe, the God who gave us his word, that God comes second to some person that you're listening to on the internet, some person whose book you're reading. And I know this from experience because I used to wake up and I would think, I've got a problem I need to solve. Let me go check so-and-so's YouTube page. Let me go check their book. Let me go read their blog. And before I was opening my Bible, I gotta finish this book, it is so good. I gotta take notes on this book, it is so great. And you can see how I've pushed God to the back burner. I pushed him to second because I wanna finish this book or learn from this person. And again, I don't want you coming to this channel before you've prayed, before you've read your Bible, or if you're gonna come here, it should lead you directly to God and not to me and my brilliant ideas because I don't have a lot of brilliant ideas. Now this last point, this is the biggest danger and this is the one that I want you to really take heed to and really pay attention to. The final danger is that we can enjoy and put our trust in self-help gurus and self-help resources more than God and more than his word. Even saying it should just shock you. Imagine waking up every day and the Bible's boring and this self-help guru's book is more entertaining. Imagine that reading and praying and being with other believers and listening to sermons becomes more boring than watching a YouTube video from your favorite self-help guru. Imagine getting to the point where worship service is boring because it doesn't offer enough to you because some guru has given you quote unquote better practices that make you feel better than what God's word and God's church have offered you. It's a terrifying feeling to realize that I have enjoyed someone's podcast on Monday morning or someone's book launch on Thursday more than the word of God. So we've got to be careful. This is so serious. And I say all this, I share all this because I've seen it and I felt it and God brought me out by his grace. The gospel is there. If you've been here where I'm at, the gospel can pull you out. Jesus will bring you in. So remember that, go back to Christ, stay focused on Christ. So maybe you do want to learn self-discipline. Maybe you do want to grow in self-control. That's a good desire. 
Ephesians 5.16, it tells us to make the best use of the time, to redeem the time. We're called to take care of our bodies and our souls. So what should you do? You should fight for self-discipline. You should fight for self-control, but you've got to have an eternal perspective. And I made a video on an eternal perspective on self-discipline and self-control. Take some time to check that video out. Think through some of the things I've shared in this video and then go read a book. Or maybe you've decided, you know what, I'm going to go to the Bible instead of this book that was recommended. Do whatever you feel the Lord leading you to, but just remember these cautions. I hope this video was beneficial to you. I hope the self-discipline video is beneficial as well. I'll see you soon.